Hello everyone, welcome to the brand new tutorial series on Python for Blender. In this tutorial series, I will teach you all the essential things that you really need to know to create add-ons for Blender. And most importantly, you will understand how Blender works internally. This tutorial series is made up of four parts. In part one, we are going to take a look at what is this Blender API, why we need that, and also some important modules that are under that because that is going to be the basic building block we really need to know in order to create Blender add-ons. After completing this, we will take a look at what are operators. These are the backbones of Blender. Okay, So we need to know what are the built-in operators available in Blender and also how to create our own operators. So with all this knowledge, we will jump to the third part and I will introduce you to the user interfaces, how the Blender's user interface is architectured by knowing that, we can create beautiful interfaces for our own add-ons. After completing that, we will create a full-blown add-on using Python instead of Blender. And we will wrap up this complete tutorial series with a summary of what we have done so far. So this is part one and we are going to take a look at the Blender API. Okay, what are all the prerequisites for this course? You need to have a basic knowledge of Python and object-oriented concepts. And you need to have a basic knowledge of Blender. If you're not familiar with the object-oriented concepts, don't worry about that. You just follow the tutorial and you'll understand everything. Just a quick note. If you want to take a deep dive in add-on development for Blender using Python, then I recommend this Udemy course, Python for Blender. It is an artist-friendly comprehensive guide to create advanced add-ons for Blender using Python. You can find the link in description. Great. Let's jump back to our tutorial. Okay, let's go and take a look at what is this Blender API and let's try to understand this. Actually, the Blender application is made up of three main modules. One is the application module, second one is standalone, the third one is game engine module. The game engine module is removed from Blender 2.8. So you don't need to worry about that. We are going to just focus on the application module and the standalone module. So first, the application module. Actually, this is the entire Blender application itself. Okay. The term BPY that you see here corresponds to the entire Blender application. It is made up of different sub-modules. For example, you can see data, context, props, path. We will see everything later. So every action that we are performing inside Blender, for example, deleting a lamp, adding a new cube, toggling between edit mode and the object mode, it is happening only because of this application module. Everything is defined under this application module. Okay. So how we are going to use this application module? By using the term BPY. Okay, so let's quickly jump into Blender and let's try to use this application module. I'm using Blender 2.8. So you can use any version that you like, but make sure that it is between Blender 2.79 and the latest release, okay? Fine, so let me go to the scripting tab, okay? So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to write a simple script on this left side, okay? Here you can see the Python interactive console. It is a quick REPL window. If you don't know REPL, what is REPL? It is just a read, evaluate, print loop. Okay. It is going to ask for input. And it will evaluate that and it will again continue the process. Okay. This is a quick place to check everything. Okay. Fine. BPY. That's what I told you, right? Okay. Just press tab key. You can see app, context, data, OPS path and everything here. That's what I showed you in the slides, okay? The BPA module is actually made up of the following sub-modules, okay? We are mainly interested on context, data, and OPS, okay? These are very important, okay? First, let me show you what is context. PPY.context, okay, dot. You can press tab key, and you can get a lot of information under that. Okay, the chain continues. Okay, you can see actually under BPY, we had these stuffs. And if you go inside context, you will get again a lot of stuffs. Okay, everything that is shown here is actually what we have in the current context. Okay, you can see the outliner, you can see the properties here, you can see the scripting tab here, and you can see a viewport here. So everything will be here. Okay, that's what the context is telling us okay so what I'm going to ask is I'm going to get the current active object the selected object from the viewport so that is under the context okay context dot let me type 
वो कैन सी सेलेक्ट सेलेक्टेड ऑब्जेक्ट ऑब्जेक्ट्स ओके वी कैन सी बी पी वाई डॉट कॉन्टेक्स डॉट सेलेक्टेड ऑब्जेक्ट इज रिटर्निंग द क्यूब ऑब्वियसली इट इज रिप्रेजेंटिंग दिस क्यूब ओके सो वॉट इफ आई वॉन्ट टू हैव ऑल दीज ऑब्जेक्ट सेलेक्टेड अगेन आई एम रनिंग द सेम कोड बी पी वाई डॉट कॉन्टेक्सट डॉट सेलेक्टेड अंडर स्कोर ऑब्जेक्ट्स ओके नाउ यू कैन सी इट इज रिटर्निंग क्यूब लाइट कैमरा ओके सो these are all the things that we have in the current context so the blender is perfectly returning the values fine i'm going to show you another thing here you can see in the top right corner we are having the scene name okay i'm going to ask for the current scene name that is the current context okay so for that bpy dot context dot so we have used selected underscore objects right so let's search for something related to scene you can press the tab key or if you are using versions like 2.79 or 2.81 you can just use control plus space key to get these options or else you can also click right click and click on sort of complete it will get this information so we need something related to scene right okay it's here okay let's use that and just press tab key and if we have something yes we have something called name nameful okay i'm going to use name it is written in the name of the currency okay let me try to change this scene one and again running the same code and you can see it is returning the value great so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new scene so click here and create a new scene so let me rename it at scene two okay now we have two scenes here scene one scene two now i'm going to ask the name of the scene this is going to be the very interesting thing here great so it is returning scene 2 obviously that's right we are in scene 2 so it is going to return scene 2 only and if you are going to ask for selected objects it is not going to return anything because we don't have anything selected in this place but if you go to scene 1 and run the same code you are going, going to get everything okay this is what you need to know about bpy.context so what you see is what you get that is what this bpy.context is saying to us okay now let's go and take a look at bpy.data bpy the third one data okay data fine so inside this also we are having a lot of options okay okay i'll tell you the difference so before that what i'm going to do is bpy.data.objects okay so you can see it is actually returning three okay we are in scene one okay it is actually returning three so if you want to look into this collection what you need to do is you need to pass it into a function called list okay this is not a blender's function it is actually python's function okay there's a spelling mistake list okay this function takes in any argument that is iteratable okay you can loop over it okay here we are having a collection so we can loop into that object it is going to show what is inside that okay now you can see we are having camera cube light so now what i'm going to do is go to scene 2 and just create a monkey great so we are in scene 2 okay now i'm switching back to scene 1 and i'm going to run the same script again now you can see it is returning 1 2 3 and also the monkey the suzanne so how is that possible we are in scene 1 we are not in scene 2 okay so let me go to scene 2 and run the same script again great here is also it is returning all the values so if i am not going to pass the list you can get the count actually you can see it is 4 okay how is that because bpy.data is going to behave differently from bpy.context okay bpy.context is going to show you what you are having currently in the scene not in the memory bpy.data is a real place where everything is getting created if you are going to create a new scene okay let me go and go and create a new scene and call it a scene 3 and let me run bpy.context dot scene you can say it is returning the current scene but if i run bpy.data dot scenes okay and you can notice one more thing here here the data is using plural form and you can see here the context is using the singular form okay from that itself you can 
clearly understand what's going to happen so i'm going to pass this inside the list again and also there's another shortcut to this okay you can just add this so it is going to break down what is inside that you can see scene one scene two scene three so this confirms that what are all the data that we have in the current blender file not in the current viewport or current screen okay it is going to get the information from the blender file itself okay okay let me show you another thing here i'm going to create a new mesh here and i'm going to materials tab okay at present we have only one material okay now what i'm going to do is i told you that bpoi.data is the real place where everything is getting created so let's go and check that whether the material is getting created there or not okay bpoi.data dot mat yes it is here materials so it has two materials it seems okay let me pass it inside a list yeah it's having some default material and there's another material which is this one okay now let me create new material material new material new material new material okay now we have a lot of materials here so let's run this script again and you can see we are getting all the materials okay this is bpy.data but what if i'm going to use bpy.context okay bpy.context dot but here the important thing is i can't just ask for material directly from context you can see it here there is no there's nothing here related to materials okay for that we need to go inside the current active material i mean current active object okay because material is applied to object okay so from there only we can access the material so context dot selected to score objects okay so i'm going to select the first one great because it is returning a list you can see there is an extra bracket over here okay so for example if i'm going to add another sphere and i'm going to run the same script again okay and i'm having everything selected here so i'm running the same script here see it is actually returning a list so i need to mention which one i want to select so zero corresponds to this and one corresponds to this always the list starts from zero okay okay fine so i'm selecting the cylinder okay dot you can see material slots okay material slots okay now if i go inside that just press uh, add a dot press tab key okay dot items we are having something like that so items and you can see it is having everything that's here so if i'm going to remove okay and again run the same script here so bpy.data.objects of cylinder having a material slot that is this one right and it is having only one material that is at the index of zero okay so you need to know the difference so this is going to really help you in the future lectures so great now you know what is bpy.data and what is bpy.context so now it's time for us to take a look at the last concept that is bpy types okay bpy dot types so what is this types okay okay it is also having its own properties and functions so what is the use of this bpy dot types actually each and every object that we have in this blender not only the not only these cubes and materials everything for example the lights the scene and you can go inside animation and you can see uh, the keyframes everything everything that you use inside this blender is actually defined under this types okay i'll show you that okay. let me just type and most importantly types usually start with capital letters so obj so okay so you can see object so here you can see object so bpu.data.object bpu.context.selected object now bpu.types.object so here this is the real place where the behavior of the object is defined not only the behavior all the functionalities all the properties of an object is defined and you can also search for something called material okay and you can look for something called scene okay so everything is defined here you can see it is returning a class 
so if I'm going to say material okay and it is also saying class dot bp dot types okay so I can prove my point here so let me take this particular material that I have in the slot or I can just take this cube this cylinder that I have in the viewport okay bpoe dot data so, so I can easily grab it from the context context dot selected underscore objects of this is the zeroth object because I have only one thing in my selection so it's going to be the cylinder so zero dot material okay not material so okay I'm having this cylinder okay and what it what I told you that everything that you have in this blender is actually defined under this types so we are creating we are using this ppo.types to create the instances I can think of it like that so this particular cylinder is also defined in this bpa.types okay so for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to pass it inside a python function called type okay just uh, this and type so what this function is going to do is it is going to determine the type of this object okay just press enter you can see it is from class bpa.types.object so you can that's what i that's what I showed you here, bpoi.types.object. And also I can change this from bpoi.data.materials of zero. And you can see it is also from class called bpoi.types and it is from material. So the type is going to act as the real place, the blueprint for everything that is defined and used here so you will use this type to create our own types okay so i'll show you how to create our own type here bpy dot types dot now the question where you're going to create our own type so i'm going to create it under a place called maybe name material okay now you can see it is having its own types a lot of properties here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add just say Raga's property okay and I'm going to assign it with the value of dummy value okay great now I'm going to access the property bpoi.types.material dot and you can see here is a property that we have defined so if I'm going to ask for that It's going to return the value so you might wonder that where am i going to use this what is the use of this actually we are already having different types here so why we need to define our own type yeah we are going to actually use this in the future lecture so we need to know types data and context so now you know that what is bpo.type and what is bpo.context and data now let's move to the next video and start uncovering new stuffs.